Hello everyone and welcome to the complete and in-depth guide to the path of Atmaken and the boss at the end of it, Barbar. Now, this is the final path video and boss video that I can do because this is the fourth and final path. After this, we've got a Warden's Guide coming out and then we're done with the guides, I'm pretty sure. Unless you guys can think of anything you'd love to see. I already released the budget video that got some really good feedback and if you'd like to see any cool challenge runs or anything or more budget gear guides, let me know. Before we get started, I have created a Discord server and I'm going to pin that as a comment and put it in the description. If you'd like to come in say hi and pop in, feel free. All my content will get posted there and it's just going to be a fun place to chill. If I ever do any community content in the future, that's also where I'm going to ask people to participate as well. So, you want to have some fun? Come and join. Now again, before I get started, this video is not a gear recommendation. This is a complete guide on how to deal with every mechanic on this path and boss fight in a solo. But, if there are any different in teams, I'll also speak about those. Now, as I said, this is the final path that I need to cover. The other three and the bosses have all been covered in their own in-depth videos. Check them out in the Red 3 playlist on my channel. And on that note, let's begin. The path of Atmaken is a path of monkeys. The boss at the end is a giant monkey, and the path itself has a puzzle room with monkey spawns that must be killed. Let's hop into the game for an in-depth analysis and in-depth explanation on how to solve each. Before we get started on this room, it's worth noting there are crates of hammers and potions both inside and outside of the room. If you've got the inventory space to take them outside, do that. If you've got to drop supplies for them, take them inside. You only need one hammer and one lot of potions, you get 20 at a time and the potions are stackable, so you only require two inventory spaces. Now onto the actual room. Before we go over a good way to solve it, let's go over everything in here. First, there's a mechanic where a player is granted Atmaken's sight. In solo runs, this will always be you at all times, however in team runs, the sight is given to the first person to enter the room, and then randomly cycles to other people. When you obtain the sight, you can see this skull above your character's model. Atmican's sight allows the player with it to see issues in the room that need fixing. Everyone else in the raid will get a chat box message stating, you sense an issue somewhere in the room. Now, there are three of these issues that players can see with Atmican's sight. First, Roof supports, also known as pillars. If the red glowing skulls appear in front of the roof supports on the side of the room, players have to click on the supports once to repair them with a hammer. You know this has been successful if you receive construction experience. The second obstruction is floor vents. If the red glowing monkey skulls appear above the vents on the floor, players must step on a vent and left click the neutralizing potion to pour it into the vent. Then you'll get a message saying that you've neutralized it. Finally, corruption. The player who has the sight can see all of the players have become red. Players must DD onto the same tile and the player with the sight needs to click the potion to cure the corruption on everybody. It's worth noting, the corruption event will not happen in solo runs, so you'll only need to worry about the pillars and vents if soloing. The amount of events that need completing is reliant on team size, for example, in solos if you see a skull above all four pillars, you only have to repair one. However, if you get pillars or vents in a duo, you'll need to fix two, in a trio, you'll need to fix three between you, and in a four to eight man team, you'll need to fix all four. For everyone not fixed, your team will take damage that is reduced for each obstruction fixed. So if nobody fixes a pillar, you'll take a load of damage. If you're in a team of four and three people do, you won't take as much, but you'll still take some. Now, onto the monsters you'll find in this room. There are three monkeys for each attack style. The baboon brawler, a baboon that uses melee and is weak to magic. The baboon thrower, a baboon that uses range and is weak to melee, and the baboon mage, a baboon that uses, believe it or not, magic, and is weak to ranged. There are also three special baboons that you've got to look out for. The baboon shaman, which much like a baboon mage, also uses magic and is weak to ranged, but it also cycles between using a magic attack and summoning baboon thralls. Now, the baboon thralls are weak versions of melee baboons, so they use melee to hit you, but they've got lower health, However, shamans can summon these infinitely until the shamans die. So, the baboon shaman should be dealt with very quickly. Next, the volatile baboon. The volatile baboon is an explosive baboon that will explode in a 3x3 area and deal significant damage. If these are killed, they'll explode the tile they're killed on. These will lock onto a player and focus on chasing them, ignoring other players unless they're hit by another player. Then, their focus can change. Finally, cursed baboons. Now, cursed baboons are not aggressive at all. These baboons will walk around the room dripping venom pools onto the floor. If a player stands in a pool, they'll take damage every tick as well as inflicting venom onto themselves. This is the only part of the entire raid that can venom. 
bear that in mind. Now, before we actually begin the room, we have to go through the waves. The waves here are actually set. The only difference between runs is that the problem or issue in the room that you have to fix is different every time. That being the pillars, vents or corruption. They're all completely random. But the actual spawns of the baboons themselves is set. Before we get into this, I'd like to give a special thanks to Relay, aka love hashtag 8045 on Discord as you can see at the bottom right, for letting me use this image. This is incredibly accurate from my testing. Let's go through the waves on a singular wave basis. Now it's worth noting, this is for solo runs. In team runs, it's incredibly similar, but there's normally an extra minion or two. For example, in a duo, the first three waves have three of the minions, and on the last wave in a trio when we were doing it, there were six specials that spawned. So do bear in mind that as this scales up in team size, there are a few more monkeys and their stats increase as well. So in a solo, on wave one, there's two melee monkeys. These are the ones that deal melee damage and that are weak to mage. On the second wave, there's two range minions, the throwers, that deal range damage and are weak to melee. And on the third wave, there are two magic baboons, the ones that deal magic damage and are weak to range. From wave four onwards is where the specials start. On wave 4, you have 3 melee minions with 1 shaman, the ones that summon thralls. On wave 5, you have 3 range minions with 1 bomber, the volatile ones that explode in a 3x3 radius. And on wave 6, you have 3 magic baboons with 1 cursed, the ones that drip poison. Now 4, 5 and 6 are meant to introduce you to each special. And between 7 and 11, these are now random. I've tested many raids and it's really hard to find a pattern to them, so I think it is genuinely just random specials. On wave 7, you'll always get two throwers, the range minions, and you'll get three random specials. On wave 8, you'll always get two mages and three random specials, and on wave 9, you'll always get two melees and three random specials. On wave 10, you'll always get a melee and a range and three specials. In all of my raids, I've not seen a mage on this wave yet, so again, it's always going to be a melee and a range from my testing. And on wave 11 in a solo, you will get five random specials. Remember, try to focus the baboons and the cursed ones first, because the volatile ones you can proc just by moving away. And that's it. That's all the information on the waves. This is how it's going to be every time, again, with the random specials. But now we've gone through that, let's get into the game and show an example run. This might be a little bit fast. Okay, so first things first, grab some hammers, grab some potions, and put on your mage gear. Now, this is what a run of this room should look like. It's going to go pretty fast, so bear with me. First, enter while wearing mage gear and pray melee. If you have to drop potions in the room, you can grab hammers from here and potions from here. Next, two melee minions will spawn. Now, kill these with magic. And then swap to your melee gear. Two rangers will spawn. Do whatever you have to do in the room, that Atmakan site says, and melee the rangers. Next, put your range gear on and pray magic and kill both minions. The first special spawns here, along with three melee minions. So put your magic gear on, and you can kill the melee minions first. Or, if you don't want to deal with the thralls, which is the correct method, you should put some range gear on and attack the shaman as fast as possible. Blow pipes are good for this, or one hit it with a buffer. Make sure you keep doing the things around the room, and then range minions spawn. Plus a volatile. To deal with volatiles like you just saw, if you wait for it to get within a space of you and then just walk away, they explode like versic crabs. Bear that in mind. After this, mage minions spawn with a cursed. So put range gear on, pray magic, and try and deal with the cursed baboon as fast as you can. Then finish off the mages. Now from the next wave, which is wave seven, it gets tricky. The specials that spawn are random. So put your range gear on, ready to kill anything that comes out, and focus the shamans first. You can avoid the cursed baboon's poison on the floor. Rangers also spawn here, so pray range, but deal with all of the specials first. So again, for these monkeys, you can stand next to them, run away, and they'll explode. Then put melee gear on and finish off the rangers. Next, pray magic and deal with the specials again. Again, these are all random from now. All of the specials that you get from here are random. This time I got two shamans and I got a volatile, as you could see. Then finish off the minions. Now, on wave nine, it's two melee minions and three special. Again, I got a lot of cursed baboons here. Remember to keep doing your room tasks. And then put your magic gear on and finish off the melee minions. So again, wave 10, there's one melee, one range and three special. So finish off the specials in any order. Again, normally deal with the shamans first. And then use the correct style on the correct minions in this room. 
And then finally, you get five random specials. You can see here, I got three bombers. So to deal with these, I'll just wait for them to get close and run away. And then have range gear on to attack everything else in the room. And then once wave 11 is done, this is it. There's still a thrower left, so if I just put melee gear on and deal with the thrower, then all that's left are the thralls that were summoned by the shamans. These can be easily dealt with with a fast weapon, so if you've got a blowpipe, use that. This is also a perfect place to bring something like chins or blood barrage to heal back up. When the room's done, you don't have to do the final task if you kill the minions in time. It'll disappear and you'll complete the room and you won't take damage. And that's the entire room complete. Now, I know that was a little bit fast paced, but that's all there is to it. You refer back to the visual guide we went through a minute ago, you look at the waves, and you just simply go through the combat triangle. From wave 7 through 11, all the specials are randomised. Try to focus the shamans first, then the cursed, and explode the volatiles. That is all there is to that room. I'll go over some tips and tricks in here for later on, but again, that's at the end of the video, like all the guides. So now let's get on to the boss. Now this is the room of Barbar. -Bar. As you can see it's slanted downhill because he likes rolling boulders down at you. Kind of reminds me of a Crash Bandicoot style fight. In fact, a lot of this raid does, even the wardens at the end. In Crash Bandicoot I'm sure there's a boss that like throws stuff at you and looks like the warden a little bit. I don't know, it's, it's cool, it's cool. I guess really used to love Crash Bandicoot. Anyway, tangent. This is Barbar's room. Let's go through its attacks real quick before we start the fight. First, there's Shockwave. This is an attack where he slams the ground. Now, it has a 5x5 five five area of effect, however, the corners aren't affected. So, you either have to run 3 tiles away, or you can run 2 tiles diagonally. That's with no invocations. We'll go through the invocations later on. Next, it's got a rock fall ability. This causes rocks to fall from the sky. Sometimes there's 2 or 3, sometimes 4 even, but only 2 of these will spawn rocks on the floor. The rocks on the floor are not attackable, and you can't walk through them, but they're there for one of his other abilities. Part of the rockfall ability is that it can throw a stone at you. When he throws a stone at you, if you are not near one of these rocks on the floor, you'll take significant damage. So, you need to make sure you're near a rock. It's worth noting that in solos, these rocks will have one health each. And then as a the team size increases, there's a different amount of health for each rock. In a three man, they have two hits worth of health. In a five man, they have three hits worth of health. And in a seven man, they have four hits worth of health. So bear that in mind. You can't all stack at the same boulder in a team. If more people are at a boulder than the amount of hits it can take, one person around the boulder will randomly take max damage. Bear that in mind. Next, he summons baboons. Now, these baboons attack you for a little bit using range, and then they'll move over to these sarcophagus. If a baboon gets three hits on a sarcophagus because they hit 20 on it every time, the sarcophagus will open up. If a sarcophagus is open, It'll consistently do a mage damage attack in an area on the floor for the rest of the fight. This can get really annoying if multiple sarcophagus open, so deal with the baboons quickly. If you attack them quickly, they'll spend a lot more time on you instead of going to the sarcophagus. If you don't hit them, they might go there straight away, so try to tag them. And finally, it's got an attack where it rolls boulders down the hill. Now this happens at 66% and 33% of its health. There's a really helpful rune light plugin if you're not confident in this, called Opponent Information. And under display style, you can change hit points to percentage, or there's an option for both. This allows you to very easily see what percentage it's at and see when you need to dodge the boulders. Again, you don't really need to avoid that without an invocation on, because there's an invocation for falling down this gap. And if you don't know when he's going to use his attack, he'll knock you down and you will die. So, bear that in mind. Other than that, let's get into the fight and see it first hand. In this fight, I personally use a buffer because it seems to be really accurate. However, I do think stab works really well here. In my budget video, I did use a Keris and it was hitting very accurately. So if you've got a rapier or a fang, I'd go with that. But because of my gear setup, I'm going to use a buffer. Now, Barber always uses melee. So you need to have protect from melee up at all times and pray whatever you need to pray. So that's his melee attack. He just slaps you. In a minute, we'll go through his other attacks when he uses them. So this is the boulder attack. He spawns boulders from the ceiling and they stay on the floor. As you can see, he used three. The middle one didn't spawn a rock and these ones did. He just threw a rock at me and I stood next to the boulder and the boulder tanked the hit. Now baboons have spawned. Again, you need to kill these really quickly. If you don't, this happens. The baboon goes to the sarcophagus and it opens it up, watch. I'm gonna let it open. This is the rock attack, so you've gotta stand next to this rubble. So he's opened this sarcophagus, so now it's firing out this constant red energy that will hit me on the floor whenever I go near it. So, that causes a big obstruction, so these baboons need to die very quickly. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you don't go to one of these rubble when it throws a rock. 
for example. It was only hitting threes before and that just hit a 37 on zero invocation. This is entry level. So that absolutely dominates you in higher invocations if you don't stand near one of these rocks. Bear that in mind. This is his boulder attack. He knocks you to the bottom of the room when he's at 66% health and boulder spawn. Put your range gear on and hit the cracked boulder. If you have your range gear on and hit the cracked boulder, you will kill it every time. Well, not necessarily in bigger groups or with certain weapons, but if you have range gear on and hit the cracked one, you will always hit your max hit. So as long as your max hit is higher than the boulder's health with the weapon that you're using, you will always kill it. It's worth noting, if you use other styles like magic, you won't always max. As you can see, I hit a 22 there, so it didn't kill the boulder and my max is higher than a 22. So make sure you're using ranged weapons here. Finally, it has a ground attack. As you can see, it made like a plus sign. So with its ground attack, it spawns a plus pattern. It goes two tiles horizontally and diagonally look and damages the diagonals on those, as you can see. To dodge this attack, all you need to do is run three tiles horizontally or vertically or two tiles diagonally. I'll try and show you that now. As you can see, if I run two tiles diagonally, none of them hit me. And now I'll let him do it again. And if you run three tiles away, it also does not hit you, as you can see. And that is the entire fight. When he throws a rock, hit the rubble. When he spawns baboons, kill them. When he does the ground attack, run a few tiles away. And don't let the baboons open these. Now we've gone over the entire fight. Let's have a look at the invocations. Now then, Barber has five invocations. We'll go through each one. First, mind the gap. Mind the gap, as we explained earlier, makes the pit at the bottom of Barber's room a lethal fall. When he does the boulder attack, he knocks you to the bottom of the room. If you're in one of the central tiles where the gap is, if this invocation is not on, you just fall to the bottom and stop in front of the pit. If this invocation is on, however, you will fall to the bottom of the pit and die. So you've got to stand to one of the sides. I think there's four tiles either side of the gap that you can stand on. Next, gotta have faith. Barber's sarcophagus energy will deal bonus damage based on how many prayer points you're missing. Now this is an interesting one. If you don't let the baboons open the sarcophagus, this is completely free because this does nothing to the rest of the fight, just the sarcophagus damage. But when we're looking at the invocation, we will let one open up and show how much damage this does based on prayer points missing. Next, jungle jerps. Nice and simple one. When you kill these baboons, they drop a banana peel on the floor. And if you stand on it, you take damage. I haven't actually stood on one of these yet, so I'm not sure if you also fall back, so you might have a potential to fall into the pit, but that's something we'll test. Next, shaking things up. This one can be quite hard if you've not got a fast reaction time, but it's ground attack, the shockwave, damages a wider area. So before, we had to run three horizontally or vertically or two diagonally. But with this on, you have to run more tiles vertically and horizontally and diagonally. It just makes the area of effect bigger. And finally, boulder dash. Now at 66 and 33% when he spawns the boulders and you've got to hit them with range, this just makes them roll quicker and spawn faster. So it just makes the phase slightly harder. However, having this invocation on does speed up the fight. There is another way to speed this part up, which I'll go over in the tips and tricks section. But if you don't want to do the tip and trick that I'm going to show you, this generally does speed up the bar bar fight because it doesn't spawn more boulders. It just spawns them faster, making the phase finish quicker. And that's it. Let's stick these on, get into the fight and we'll show what they look like. As with all other bosses, the path invocations also level bar bar up. But from testing so far, all I've noticed is that he gets a stat buff and his boulders get a health buff. Other than that, I'm not really sure how much the fight changes. I need to test more, but for now, all I know is that the boulders gain health per path level. So bear that in mind. Okay, so let's go over the invocations. The first invocation I'll show you is the banana peel one with the baboons. Now, as you can see, it's dropped some banana peels on the floor. This doesn't happen without the invocation. And if you stand on them, you actually take damage and get stunned. So bear that in mind. The next invocation I'll show you is the ground attack. When it does it, you'll see it's a much larger area now and you have to run four tiles away to dodge it entirely. Now, without the invocation on, it's three tiles horizontally or vertically or two diagonally. However, with the invocation on, running diagonally means you actually have to run three tiles to dodge it, as you can see. Now what we're gonna do is look at the sarcophagus one. We're going to let this baboon open it up and then kill the baboon. And now the sarcophagus is going to damage us. Now this increases based on missing prayer. So what we're going to do, we're going to get back up to full prayer and get hit a few times. As you can see, it's currently hitting fours, fours or fives. So now if we just drain our prayer a little bit, 
Okay, now we're at 36 prayer. Let's see what they hit. They are currently hitting eight. Bear in mind, this is on entry mode. 11, nine. So as you can see, the invocation does make them deal increased damage based on missing prayer. As you can see, I'm currently 10 prayer. So if I keep getting hit by this sarcophagus, 14. And again, this is on entry mode. So it's gone from a three to a four to a 14. So bear that in mind. As the invocation level scales, that does seem to multiply the sarcophagus damage by 3 to 4, so be very careful. Next, we'll show you the boulder dash invocation. Now, the boulder dash invocation means that the boulders on the 66 and 33% phase travel and spawn faster. So, if I just get him down, here we go. Now, you might not be able to tell without a comparison, but as you can see, they are going much faster and spawning slightly quicker. It's only a tick or two, but it is quicker. I'll put a side-by-side -side comparison up now. So, be very careful. The final invocation is Mind the Gap. If you get knocked into this pit, you just instantly die. You take your entire health and damage and die. And that's all there is to that one. So again, you have to be very careful. Not only do the boulders knock you back, but in the fight, when the boulders spawn, he will knock you all the way down your row. You have a few ticks to move as he goes to the top of the room and then he will knock you down. I do recommend marking this tile and this tile which is the edge of the gap and just making sure that you're not standing anywhere on these middle five columns all the way up to the top because it does knock you from the top to the bottom. Bear that in mind. Now that's all the invocations covered. Let's go through some tips and tricks. Now first we'll start with the room before this. There are two tips and tricks I'd like to go through in there. First, using Ching Chompers or Blood Barrage is very beneficial. If you bring Thralls into the raid, bring Ching Chompers. If you're on Ancients, bring Barrages. Now, as the Shamans summon Thralls, it can get quite annoying to deal with them quickly. But as you're going through the fight, if you bring Ching Chompers or Barrages, one Chin or one Barrag should kill them all when they're stacked up. Also, if you use a Ching Chomper on a Thrall, it rolls off of that's defense. So if there's other minions around it, like melee minions or mage minions or range minions or anything around the Thrall, you'll more than likely kill things around you as well using chins. The benefit to Blood Barrage, however, is at the end of the room, you can use Blood Barrage to heal up, saving supplies. This is mainly a tip for speedrunning the room, because it's not really something that you have to do, but it is something that speeds up the room significantly, and if you use it mid-wave, you do save damage. Next, another small one in that room, is that if Shamans are safe spotted behind a pillar in the middle of the room, they actually can't summon thralls. They don't attack you at all, so they can't do the attack, summon thrall, attack, summon thrall cycle. So if you can trap them behind, if you want to focus the curse baboons or the volatile ones, or just the other ones in the room, you can do that and they won't spawn anything until they've got line of sight with you again. Now, onto the boss. There's only three that I really want to go through here. The first tip is that boulders actually kill baboons. Watch. They just squash them and kill them in one hit. So you don't have to deal with them if they're not on a sarcophagus. Secondly, even with boulder dash on, which makes it faster, you can do a boulder skip. If you hit and run as the hit splat happens on the boulder, you can actually completely go through the boulder. When this happens, Barbara will stop throwing the boulders entirely, so you skip the entire phase. So if you can do this on the first or second set of boulders, you save a lot of time in this fight by skipping the phase. Now the third piece of advice is that if you stand in the middle of the room and spawn a piece of rubble here, Barbar is completely safe spotted. If you kite him properly around this, he will not summon baboons, he will not attack you, he will not throw boulders, he will not do anything except for if he hits the 66 and 33% threshold, and what he'll do is that he'll still summon the boulders and get rid of the rubble. But in this state, he does virtually nothing. You can screw up like this, but if you do it properly, you will take absolutely no damage, and this works all the way up to the maxing vacation levels. You will take absolutely no damage, it is crazy. Again, I've screwed up twice here, but I've got a video on this explaining it in more detail, and I'll link that in the description. Even in teams, it'll just stay focused on you and not change his focus at all. And that's all the helpful tips and tricks that I've got at the minute for Barbar in the room. Now, I hope you liked this video, I hope it helped out in some way. I try to go pretty in depth with these, and like I said, I have already got an in depth video on all three of the other paths, so feel free to check them out. The Barbar safe spots are also in the description and in the Raids 3 playlist. Hope you enjoyed the video. Love you and leave you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!